Emily and Ezra and welcome back to Sunday School at Home. We are so excited to be here for our first real lesson of 2021 and as you guys heard from our intro last week, our new goal for this year is Bible literacy, which means learning how to read your Bible well. So for the next few weeks, Ezra, we're going to start with a really simple goal. Mm -hmm. You want to hear what it is? What is it? We're just going to read the Bible. Isn't that an easy goal? Mm, pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy. So just like we've been doing, we're going to be reading our Bible stories, and we're also going to be looking at it from the Bible. So hopefully you guys have read the story for today from our Gospel Story Bible, and then we're going to do a comparison from the Bible. But before we get started, what did we say we're going to be doing first? Um, filling up this jar. Oh, Ezra's jumping the gun. We said we were going to pray first. Oh, yeah. Remember, we want to remind you guys that prayer is talking to God about anything and everything. He is our best friend, and we should be talking to him like he is. We can tell him when we're happy, when we're sad, when there's something really weighing on us that we're like, God, can you please talk to me about this? I'm having a hard time with this. Or we can be like... Thank you, God, for all this awesome stuff, because, like, look outside. He made all that fun snow. We've been playing in the snow a lot, and Ezra made an awesome tunnel in the snow, and so... I've also got a question. Okay. What does jumping the gun mean? <laughs> it just means getting ahead of what we're supposed to be doing. So, let's start with what we're supposed to be doing, which is praying. And today, Ezra, why don't we thank God for the fun snow that we have, okay? All right, Jesus... We are so thankful that we can be here together learning about you, and we are so thankful that you created beautiful, fun snow to help us get through our long, cold winter. We thank you that it can be fun and that we can play in it, and thank you that you are creative and you make beautiful things for us to enjoy. Bless us in our lesson today. Help us all to learn more about you and help us to become more like you. Amen. All right, now we are going to get to what Ezra was talking about. So for Bible literacy, as you guys heard from the story this week, which hopefully you read at home, Jesus talks about the Bible or scripture, God's word, being the bread of life. What do you think that means? I'm not sure. Hmm. It means our spirit gets fed special food. It's not real food, but our spirit is fed when we know and read the word of God. So... To help us see how much we are being fed by the Word of God when we read our Bible stories, every week, we're going to put in one scoop, ah, it's gonna fall, one scoop of this wheat seed, because God, or Jesus in the story, compares it to bread. Bread is made of wheat. So we're gonna put in one scoop of wheat seed. So that's our one scoop. Does that look like very much to you guys? No. No, it looks like almost nothing, but, for all of our online lessons, we're going to put in a scoop. All the lessons we've already done from the past year. Do you know how many lessons that is? That's 40. It's like 40 lessons. So Ezra's going to sit down here and scoop us out 40 scoops of these wheat seeds to show us that we have been getting our spiritual food over the last year bit by bit by bit. And we already have 40 scoops of spiritual food inside of us. So Ezra's going to quietly fill that up. Well, I explained to you guys what is on our board. So hopefully you have your paper and pencil. I'm gonna get a paper to show you. So turn your paper this way, so not like this, but like this, to match the board. And then you guys are going to do just what I've done at the top. We're putting up the number of our story from the Gospel Story Bible. So if you open it up, the story we are doing this week, The Temptation of Jesus, look up here, it says Story 84. So write that up in the top corner. Try to make this pretty small because we're going to be really trying to fill this out as much as we can. Then our title, The Temptation of Jesus. So you can copy it down from right here or just copy it from in your Gospel Story Bible. The next part is put down where it comes from in the Bible. Right? All of the stories from our Gospel Story Bible are based on real stories from in the Bible. And this one comes from Matthew chapter 4 from verses 1 to 11. And then the last thing, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute, is to draw a circle and put a little plus sign in between so we have four little sections. 
So you guys keep working on that. Fill all this out. Ezra, how are you doing on your scoops, buddy? I'm up to 28. 28 scoops. So Ezra's almost done. I'm just going to give you guys one minute to finish filling out your paper and see how Ezra's doing. He's getting there. Then we'll get started on our actual part of our lesson. How are we doing, Ezra? 36. 36. 37. 37. 38. 38. 39. 39. 40! 40. 40. Okay, let's show everybody what we've got. Can you back up a bit? Oh, yeah. Okay, so look, guys. 40 lessons, 40 times reading stories out of our Bible. And so this is how much we have. It actually looks like quite a bit. So every time we read more of our Bible, we get it to be filled up more and more and more and more and more, which is so great. So our what spiritual food, overflows. then that's awesome. That means we can start teaching the Bible to other people. And we can start doing that now too. We can tell other people about what we have learned hey, from Mommy. one single story. Looks like there's some black things in here too. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we're going to put this over here. Ezra is going to go and sit down and he's also going to follow along and sort of chat to us. So Ezra, why don't you go sit and we'll get set up. Okay, everybody, we're all set up here. Ezra's still here. Ezra, say hi. Hi. Ezra's just off camera and he's going to follow along and help us out. Uh, before we get started, though, do you guys know what these are? Can you see them from way over there? Something delicious and chocolatey. What shape are these, Ezra? Egg shaped. Egg shaped. What do we celebrate with chocolate eggs? Easter. Easter. So Easter's coming up. And as we lead up to Easter with our stories, mm, now I'm just eating this chocolate egg. It's delicious, but I can't talk that well. As we head into Easter in a few weeks, what we're going to be doing for our lessons is hearing about Jesus' life before his death. We're not going to hear about all of it, but we're going to do some of the key stories that show us who Jesus is, how he's the son of God, why he is so important and good to follow, and then we're going to look at Easter, how he has done the ultimate thing for us by dying in our place and then defeating death when he raises again on Easter Sunday. So we'll read about that in a couple weeks. Today we're starting with the temptation of Jesus. So Ezra, we're going to be doing a recap of the story of temptation of Jesus. Hopefully you guys have read it at home with your parents, but if not, just follow along. So grab... Your marker? Ezra, what have you got? A pencil or a marker over there? I've got a pencil. Okay, Ezra's got a pencil. Great. So, before we do our recap, we're going to set up our paper. So I want you guys to do the same thing that I'm doing here. We're going to have two sides to do our Gospel Story Bible and then our Bible. And then down here, we're going to have two sections to see how does this story show us God or Jesus. And then we're going to have one more section. What is the key point of this story? So... Divide your paper in half down the middle like this. And then we're going to do one line closer to the bottom like this. Hopefully my marker won't run out. These have been a little tricky, um, but that's okay. I'm going to trade to a white marker just in case. So now we're going to open up our uh, Gospel Story Bible. Open this up in front of you. If you don't have it, just go and grab it. If you don't have a copy yet, that's fine. Follow along. Also get your parents to email me, email me, children at stgeorgesonline.com so that you can get your copy and be reading these together. So first in our story, The Temptation of Jesus, he has just been baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit descends on him. Let's draw Jesus right here. We're going to give him some hair. A beard, a little mustache to connect the beard in with a sort of a smile, two eyes and a little nose. And then I like to make Jesus's body super simple by doing two straight lines down, connecting them, then do a circle in the middle and two lines that go up to each side. So it looks like he's holding his hands in front of him here together and then we'll give them two little feet and so what else is key from this part the holy spirit is on jesus he descends like a dove so we'll use a dove 
to represent Jesus here, or sorry, to represent the Holy Spirit having descended on Jesus. Here we go. So we have Jesus with the Holy Spirit, and it says that Jesus was sent out into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days. So fasting means he did not eat or drink anything, and he's out in the wilderness. So let's draw here the wilderness. Try to save some space down here. We're going to be doing more space, uh, more stuff below. So here in the wilderness, it's like sandy, probably full of like rocks, scraggly bushes. It's not a nice place to be. And here we go. Now, and this is the next part we're going to write up here. We're going to show that he did not eat or drink. So typical food would have been fish, water. We'll do a water drop. And then we're going to do a circle around them and do a strike through. No food or water for 40 But how can you fast for 40 days? days? Well, because he's God's son. He's just, he's not just a regular man. So now he's out there in the, um, in the wilderness, not eating. And who comes along? Satan. Satan comes along to tempt Jesus. And now we're going to represent Satan with a snake. So we're going to draw sort of a curvy snake because we know that Satan um, was like a snake in the Garden of Eden. I'm going to use this dot to make eyes. So he is um, a snake here. This is just representing Satan. So Satan has come along and tries to tempt Jesus by saying, if you are the son of God, turn the bread, turn these stones into bread so that you can eat. So Satan, tempt number one, wants Jesus to take some stones and make them into bread. So we're going to just draw like a slice of bread type of thing. And what happens? Jesus says, no, I'm not going to do that because man does not live by bread alone. Remember, here's our jar. Super fun. Man does not live by bread alone. He needs God's word for life. So does Jesus give in to this temptation even though he hasn't eaten or drank anything in 40 days? X, he does not give in. So cross that out. Now Satan, he's not gonna just leave. He's gonna try tempting Jesus a second time. And he says to Jesus, after he takes him up to the top of the temple, he dares Jesus to prove he's God's son. And he says, jump off, jump off this temple. I know that the angels will catch you. God says it. Satan uses scripture to try and get Jesus to sin. Satan is very, very tricky. He says, it's written, you shall not put the Lord God to your test. That's what Jesus says to Satan. He's like, no way, you don't test God. So over here, we're going to draw, we're gonna draw like sort of a temple-y type of shape. Satan took Jesus up to the top, so we're gonna just do like a little stick figure of Jesus. Satan is the snake still up at the top and he's saying to Jesus just jump off the angels are going to catch you so we're going to draw a little angel and he even uses scripture to try and trick Jesus I mean we know you can't trick Jesus so he says even like the angels will catch you and Jesus comes back and says no you do not put God to the test so, does Jesus give in to this one, Ezra? No. No. Then again, Satan tries to tempt Jesus. And he says to him, If you worship me, then everything in the world will be yours. So, let's draw the world. And Satan says he will give all of the world, all the kingdoms of the world to Jesus. So we're gonna draw a picture of the earth and we're gonna sort of put it in a box with a bow on top because Satan is like, I'll give this to you as a gift if you bow down to me. And what does Jesus say to him? Be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall 
Worship the Lord your God, and only him shall you serve. So Jesus again comes back with scripture. He's like, no chance in the world am I going to bow down and worship you. There is only one true God. There is only one to worship. And so Jesus comes back with all of these things. So now we're going to put some words underneath here to help remind us what each picture is. So the first temptation, Jesus says, we can only get life from God's word. Just like we talked about with our grain, with our bread seeds. They're not bread seeds, they're wheat seeds. Um, so we're gonna write down life from God's word. So follow along here. Life is L, I, F, E, life from F, R, O, M, God's word. G, O, D, apostrophe, S. And then we're gonna put word in capital letters. Life is from God's word, not just food. There we go. Then this one, temptation number two, Jesus says, don't test God. So we're gonna write that underneath. Don't, D-O-N apostrophe T, test, T-E-S-T, -E God, G-O-D, don't test God. And then what happens with our last one, Ezra? Satan wants him to worship, Satan wants Jesus to worship him. And what does Jesus say? He says, be gone, Satan. Be gone, Satan, because we only worship God. So down here, we're going to write worship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P, worship only God. So excellent reminders for us. Now that we've done our recap of what this story says, we're gonna open up our Bible. I hope you guys maybe had the chance to mark out where it is in your Bible. So if we look here, halfway through our Bible, and then a little further is where the Gospels are. Ooh, where is it in mine? I've got my marker here. So just so you guys can see in the bottom, there's like two thirds, the Gospels are in the back half of the Bible. So we're opening it up to Matthew 4, and we're just going to read it straight here out of the Bible and make notes as we go along on this side. You know what, let's even mark over here. We're gonna put Gospel Story Bible, GSB, on this side, so we know that this is what the Gospel Story Bible says, and then what does the Bible say? So we'll put Bible over here. There we go. Great. Okay, so we're going to read some little parts from this and we'll stop and draw some pictures as we need to. So, from number four, and we're doing verses one to 11. So Matthew four says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, pause. Okay, so here we see it's the same thing. We're going to draw a picture of Jesus. Little mustache here. And some eyes and a nose. And it says he was led up by the Spirit. So again, we're going to draw um, the Holy Spirit represented by a dove. And he's in the wilderness. So draw the wilderness behind him here. Give him some feet, some rocks, and a scraggly old bush. Some sand and dirt. Okay, so he's there in the wilderness, and the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone 
but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, so we know that this is just as it is in the Bible. So let's draw this same picture again. We're going to put our number one, the first temptation that Satan um, tried to tempt Jesus with was to do turning stones into loaves of bread. So draw your little piece of bread. Oh, that looks a bit like a mushroom, but that's okay. <laughs> so, and we know that Jesus did not give in to that temptation. And this is just what he said, right? He said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so all those words are written down for us in the Bible, in our scripture. So life comes from God's word. So we're gonna write the same thing, life from God's word. Over here, just to show that it is the same. Life from God's word. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys one minute. Just finish that up. All right, the next part. So here we are in verse 5. Oh, I forgot to say, if you guys have your Bibles, hopefully you have them open and you're following along. If you have a different translation than me, remember mine is an ESV um, translation of the Bible. If you have a different translation, still follow along, but it will. there will be a few words that sound a little bit different. And that's okay. So um, now in verse five, then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. What's a pinnacle? And the pinnacle, good question. What's a pinnacle? The pinnacle is the very top, the, t the highest point of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. And here's where Satan gets so tricky because he's quoting scripture to Jesus. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. So Satan knows that God takes care of Jesus, and he's like, just try. Why don't you just jump off? You know the angels are going to take care of you. Even I know that. And Jesus said to him again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So Jesus keeps coming back against Satan with scripture, with other stuff that has been written down in the Bible that God has said. So God says, do not test him. So we're gonna do the same thing. This is right. So temptation number two, we're gonna copy it over here and do our temple, Jesus and Satan. So Satan has taken Jesus up to the top of the temple. Here he is. Give him some beard. I didn't give him a beard over here. I'm going to just fill that in. Maybe some eyes, at least so he can see. Oh, he's getting little crooked eyes. That's okay. And Satan represented by the serpent or the snake. And he says, jump down. You know that your father, God, says that the angels will catch you and take care of you. Oh, Ezra, do you see this angel? Mm -hmm. His eyes are so crooked. Hopefully you guys can draw a little better than I can with this chalk marker. So he says, jump down. You know that it's even written in scripture that God will take care of you. And Jesus says, it's also written in scripture. Don't test God. So he's like, no way, man. Not going to do that. And we're going to write this again. Why are we writing this two times, Ezra? We've already done it all over here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's so that we know what happens in both stories. So we know it from both, that's right. And if we write it two times, it's gonna sink into our minds twice as much, which is great. So we're gonna write, don't test God over here. Don't test God. Okay. So you guys finish that one up there, and then we're going to get started on our next part, which is verse 8. Okay, so when you're ready, we're going to start at verse 8. 
Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Okay, so it doesn't talk about the mountain in our gospel story Bible. How much do you think that matters? Not much. It's not in there. You're right. It doesn't really matter that much. It's not super important to the story. But, you know, we are going to add it in, in our picture. So temptation number three. We're going to have a mountain. And it says here that the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all of these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Hmm. So here they are on the mountain. You can draw Jesus up here. It'd be nice if this was working. Let me try my peach colored one. Good, there we go. Okay, so Jesus is up here. Satan is showing him all the kingdoms of the world. So you can just draw like some sort of city type shapes down here. So he's like, I'm gonna give you all this stuff and everything that belongs to those cities, like wealth and riches and power and all that stuff. And then Jesus said to him, this is verse 10, be gone Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So, this is just the same, other than in the Bible we see that Satan has taken Jesus up to a mountain. That doesn't super matter. He was doing the same thing here. He's like, oh, I'm going to give this to you as a gift. And he says, no way. He says, worship only God. So we're going to write that again over here. Worship only God. All right, so we're looking at the two stories. We've compared them from the Gospel Story Bible and the Bible. And how similar do they look, Ezra? Pretty similar. Almost exactly the same, right? So the Gospel Story Bible did a great job taking exactly what's in here and writing it out for us so that we can understand it. And then the Gospel Story Bible also gives us this great paragraph at the bottom. And it helps us to see they tell us that every time Jesus answered the devil, he quoted from the book of Deuteronomy. Maybe you guys have that marked in your Bible. If not, I've got it marked in mine. We're going to flip open to Deuteronomy, which is way back here. I can't seem to open it. Okay, there we go. So look at your Bible. It's way here at the beginning, not very far in. So Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. We're going to read this together. It says, and he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So here it's written, this is what Jesus is quoting, and this is from the Old Testament. Um, and it talks about it more in our in our gospel story Bible. And so that's so great to see all these different places where Jesus has quoted to come against Satan. And that is so great that we can get to see that. Um, now we're going to start in our next section. I'm going to try out another marker because my peach one was starting to run out. So in this section down here, hopefully you guys can see this well, we're going to write Jesus. How does this story show us Jesus? J-E-S-U-S, -S, underline, good. So how does this show us Jesus? Well, just like it talks about in that last section in our Gospel Story Bible, Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, just like the people of Israel were in the desert for 40 years. And what happens is that 
when the people of Israel, who are God's chosen people, way back in the Old Testament, when they are in the desert, they complain and grumble and they are angry at God that they are out there. What's the difference, Ezra? How about Jesus in the desert when Jesus he's out there? Jesus never complained at all. About Jesus it. does not complain at all. He does not get in, give in to sinful temptations. So we see Israel, we're going to draw uh, two faces. One here to represent Israel. We will write down Israel here. I, S, R, A, E, L. Israel, how do they feel when they're in the desert? They are mad at God. They are grouchy. So we're going to draw a mad, grouchy face. And then in comparison with Jesus, J, E, S, U, S, Jesus is at peace. So we're going to draw like a peaceful face with two sort of U shapes for eyes, looking very peaceful and contented. And we also see that Jesus, it shows Jesus' perfection in that when he is tempted, we're going to do a line like this. When tempted, so right up here, we're going to write down when, W-H-E-N, tempted, T-E-M, P T E D. When tempted, what happens with Jesus, Ezra? What does he say to Satan? He says uh, he quotes from Deuteronomy. Right, he quotes from Deuteronomy, and he says to temptation, "No, he is not going to give in." So we're going to draw a little face here with a no, and here we have. A face saying no to temptation, which is unlike Adam in the Garden of Eden when God created the first man and woman. What happened was he was also tempted by Satan, but we see that he gave in to sin. So we're going to just draw a little picture like that. Adam gave in and he ate from the fruit that he was not supposed to. That's my apple core, if that's hard to see. You guys can draw a piece of fruit there. So why are we comparing Jesus to Adam? Because the Bible talks about Jesus being the new Adam. Jesus, when tempted, does not give in, but Adam did. So now that's why Jesus is, uh, well, Jesus is God, right? Jesus does not give in to temptation, and that's why he is able to take our place because he's perfect. And unlike Adam, who did um, sin and give in to temptation, Jesus does not. Bam! So that is awesome. Now over here, we're going to talk about what is the key part of this story. So this is kind of talking about what it shows us about Jesus. Then over here, the key part of the story. We're going to draw a key. I've tried drawing a lot of keys. My keys always look a little funny. You guys, if you have a really good way to draw a key, send me a video so I can find out how. So I'm going to start like this with sort of a circle that's not quite closed and then a straight line. But don't go all the way up. And then we're just going to kind of do like a zigzaggy in and out. What do you think, Ezra? Does that look like a key to you? A little bit. A little bit, like an old-fashioned key, not a key that we usually use these days. So we're going to write down that same important stuff. Jesus does not give in to temptation. Okay, so we're going to write Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, does not, D-O-E, Come on, marker. S. Not. N. O. T. Jesus does not give in to temptation.
So we really see that Jesus does not give in to temptation is the key part of the story. But what we didn't talk about before is that we also have that same power that Jesus has to not give in to temptation. Do you know where that comes from in the Bible, Ezra? Um, no. How about here? Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Him is Jesus. I can do all things. Does that mean we can do whatever we want? No. No. We need to read it in the context of this book. And what it is saying is that we can do all the things that God wants for us to do because we have the strength of Jesus within us. And so that means we don't have to give in to temptation just mm -hmm. like Jesus. So we have his strength in us and we can say, no, Satan, when he tempts us. Ezra, tell everybody, how does mommy get tempted by Satan? Sometimes by eating too many treats. Sometimes too many treats. I love treats. And Satan does tempt me and make me want to eat a lot, a lot of treats. But I can say, no, Satan. Jesus has given me the strength to say no to you and to not give in when you are tempting me. Also, I really like that this story shows how it's important for us to know our Bible. Jesus knows the scriptures that are in the Bible, and he uses them against Satan. And when we know our Bible well, we can also use those scriptures to come against Satan when we are tempted. Now, Ezra, show everybody your picture. Ezra followed along, and look, it looks almost exactly like what was on the board. Hold it a little closer to you yourself so they can see it there. All the same stuff. So hopefully your picture looks similar to this one. And then you guys can use it to teach your mom and dad this story. So you guys read it with them, hopefully, and now you can tell them all these parts that we learned from it, and especially the part that Jesus does not give in to temptation, and we can be like him. So the next thing we're going to do, fill up our jar, Ezra. Remember, every time we are reading from our Bible, we are going to put an extra scoop into our jar without dropping any to see how we are being filled up with spiritual food. That's so great. And the last thing we're going to do is our new scripture memory verse. Almost one whole year ago, maybe more than one whole year ago now, we were doing John 3.16. And you guys hopefully still all have that memorized. Now we're going to start on John 3.17. These two verses go together really, really well, and they're going to come up in a new lesson soon. So we're going to practice John 3.16, and then Ezra and I are going to teach you John 3.17. So Ezra, let's do John 3.16, and you guys follow along. Say it out loud with us. For, For God, God so loved, loved the world that he gave, gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so now here is 17. Follow along with the words on the screen. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Great job, you guys. We're so glad that you're here with us learning more about Jesus. Before we go, we're going to remind you. I got to go way down here because I left my Bible way at the bottom. So this week... Open up your gospel story Bible with your parents to story number 86. Jesus cleanses the temple. Ask your parents to read that with you. And then this is what we're going to be learning about next week. Doing a recap from here and then opening our Bible to follow along and see what it says. Thanks for being with us today, you guys. We'll see you again next time. Bye! Bye.